You have followed Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Past episodes of the Authentic Business Adventures program can be found in the podcast link at drawincustomers.com. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios. Actually, we're coming remotely, but everybody is, right? Anyways, that studio is underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. Today, we're welcoming slash preparing to learn from Jeff Redondo, the managing partner at Invictus Advisors. Jeff, how are you doing today? Good, thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. So, Jeff, you are going to talk to us today about money mindset. Can you can you help us with that? Let's just start out by defining that. Sure. So, you know, one of the things that all of us as entrepreneurs we go through is like we deal with emotions every different – we deal with finances in every different parts of our business. You know, everything from our personal finances to our business finances to making sure that um, – you know, we have the money to pay our employees, pay our, you know, to uh, to every every different part of our, our of our of our business. Um, but one of the things that we sometimes forget that we forget to talk about is the emotional, I would say, baggage that goes along with finances and about people's perceptions of money and about how they how they react uh, around when they don't have enough. Um, they go into a scarcity mindset. And sure. so um, as business owners, we always have to be leery of um, when we start going down that path of um, emotions and getting our emotions wrapped up into finances. That's fair. That's fair. And how long have you been helping people with this? You know, we, we actually created this new, it's a, you know, it's a new program through our firm. What we've realized with a lot of our clients is that they're, you know, they're afraid to look at their finances. They're afraid to look at where they're at in their as their business. Sure. And so, you know, our one of our, you know, our classic example is we have one of our clients who's a seven figure business owner, and didn't know that he was making seven figures. <laughs> and all right, you know, I know you're probably shocked at that, but what it what it does is that he was so with his nose to the grindstone that he really didn't look at his finances and he really didn't look at, you know, the the business he was creating because he was so focused on selling and he was so focused on the operations of the business that the finances came third. Sure. And so when we had to tell him, hey, you're making seven figures, he had to like step back and kind of, it kind of get him, got him into a new perspective. Um, you could sell all you want, but if you don't know where your where your business is standing, then you're just going to keep you know keep selling and selling and selling, and not knowing where that you know where that leads you. Did he have a ballpark idea? I feel like he would get a huge tax bill and think, hey, what's this all about? <laughs> yeah, he was he was right around you know you know he was right around high. He thought he was around high. Six figures, like he knew okay. that, like you know, okay. he could just feel it without looking at any financials. But he didn't really know that he busted that seven figure mark until we actually told him. Sure, right? And it's just because you look at you may look at your bank statements and you may, you may look at your bank statements and be like, oh my god, I have plenty of money, but when in reality you really don't because right. things are going in and out, especially at that level. Things are sure. going in and out so fast. Right. Um, you don't know. You don't know where you're at. Sure. Sure. So you, where you're coming from is it mostly a paperwork accounting direction, or is it more psychological than that? It's more. It's more around emotions. You okay. know, because what we one of the things that we've talked a lot to business owners about is, you know, I'll I'll ask a business owner, hey. Um, how often do you meet with your accountant? And they'll be like once a year. And I ask them why. And they said, well, I'm afraid to talk to him. <laughs> so then, All right. And I, was, and I was like, I asked another question, why? And they said, because I'm afraid what he has to say to me, or I don't understand him, or I'm, um, 
I'm fearful of what he has to say. Sure. And those are and those are things that are around numbers. Those are things stories that we tell ourselves. Okay. Right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose if they don't know the numbers, they don't even know what to be afraid of. I guess. Right. Right. And so a lot of them, you know, for entrepreneurs anyway, you know, the big, you know, a lot of times people go into business for themselves, entrepreneurs, small business owners, because they think about freedom. All they want is freedom. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to be able to lay by the beach. You know, my business It's the typical uh, view of entrepreneurism. But what happens is that, you know, what happens is that people get, um, they don't realize their their finances Mm -hmm. and once they realize hey i'm not doing so well then that dream of freedom in entrepreneurship is kind of blows blows them out of the water sure you know and so um it it it's it's a real um it's a real it's an eye-opening experience when you um, when you actually have to look at your financials and deal with the emotions that that come around with that. Sure. How what percentage of business owners that you come across would you say have a solid grasp of their financials? Uh, maybe twenty five to thirty percent. Really low. Okay. Really low. Most okay. of the business owners when we talk to were like, "Hey, you know." I, Perfect example. I, I, you know, we were at a business conference one time, and we were talking to a colleague of ours. And we're like, "Hey, you know, where are you at financially?" And they're like, "They, they were quiet for me. They were actually just thinking." And they're like, "You know, I really don't know." <laughs> and, and I was like, "Okay, um, what was the last time you know when you spoke with your accountant?" She says, oh, "Well, I, last time I spoke with my accountant, we were around six figures." And I was sure. like. Okay, um, and that's the, and that's a typical story. All right. When we talk to small business owners, it's like, you know, they say or they'll say, "I'm around six figures," or "I'm around, you know, fifty thousand dollars a year," or "I'm around eighty thousand dollars a year." Sure. Right. I, there's very very few that are able to say, you know what? Yes, I make seventy five thousand dollars a year. Or I mean, mm-hmm. eighty thousand dollars. Like they're very confident with saying that. It's sure. always the number. You know, it's always around. It's always about. It's always, you know. All right. And you can you walk us through how you solve it? It really has to do with them getting a better grasp of their their um, their confidence around numbers. So, you know, we talk about, it's not just we talk about finances and, you know, where, you know, we have a program that we're talking about. It's not just about finances. It's about numbers in general. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the things that we talk about is everyone, you know, a lot of people have issues around their age or a lot of people have issues around their weight or a lot of people have issues around their, um, the mileage in their car. Or okay. so it's not just it's not just a matter of their their finances. It's about numbers in general. And so sure. one of the things that we talk about with people is we help them reestablish their relationship with money and reestablish their relationship with the numbers in general. You know, we talk to them about what what comes up when they're looking at their budget. We talk about you know when you're accountant hands over your financial statement how do you feel Mm -hmm. um because all that is relevant you know people are like oh you shouldn't have you shouldn't have emotions in business it's true but everyone does sure and so if you can control those emotions and you can control the way you look at numbers then you're way more likely to make better business decisions gotcha okay well that makes sense that makes sense so when someone comes to you and you can tell that they're just a train wreck when it comes to even knowing anything about their numbers, what's your first step in helping them? You know, it's really kind of helping them understand why they're in a in a train wreck in the in the first place. Sure. It's you know, um, a good example is I got off the phone with a um, 
uh, somebody a couple days ago, and she talked about when she was in college, she um, real she was in so much debt, and she felt overwhelmed, and she felt um, that she didn't know where to begin. And okay. so in this time, during the COVID-19, it's the same thing. A lot of people have lost their jobs, and they don't know. I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to start. I don't know, um, you know, what to do. Sure. And if you're in this spiral of negativity, you're never going to be able to see the resources that are available to you. Very fair. Very fair. And so what we, what we what we do is we help people, you know, stop that spiral <laughs> out of control and get them to a point where they can start thinking rationally about like, oh, you know, maybe I can drive for Uber or maybe I can pick up a second job, you know, try to look for another job. But they're so sure. focused on, you know, um, their current financial state that nothing else matters. All right. All right. So when you meet someone like this, it doesn't sound like they have to exclusively be an entrepreneur. That They could just be a person that just personally don't really know their, where they stand financially. Yeah. And, you know, a part of it is because, you know, This is our, you know, we've recognized this in business owners specifically, but this program is not just designed for business owners. It's really designed for anyone that's having difficulty handling the emotions around their finances. Okay. You know, one of the people, one of the people, one of my colleagues um, in, in, in a, in one of, with one of our business coaches, you know, she says, I bought a money mastery program, but I didn't complete it. And I asked her why. And she says, because I couldn't even pull it out of the box. All right. Right? She felt, just by pulling it out of the box, she immediately felt overwhelmed. Because oh, she didn't know what to do first. She looked okay. She looked at the program and she's like, what do you mean I have to budget? <laughs> what do you mean I have to, do, you know, save money? What do you mean I have to cut this expense? What do you mean I have to cut that expense? Sure. And if you're, if you're not even comfortable enough looking at your financials in a common, confident way, you can't even expect to, like, create a budget. Right. You know? I mean, we don't even use the word budget. Right. And we don't even use the word budget in our program. Okay. Right? Because the people immediately go to the – people immediately go to the budget and they're like, oh, my God, you mean I have to stop spending? (laughs) Right? Sure. What I call it is for businesses, I call it a – a profit maximization plan. So sure. everyone wants more profit. Right. Right. And so if you if you if you think about oh my god I have to budget, that's such a people are such a you know uh, that's such an overwhelming word for people. Sure. So if you change it to a profit maximization, then most business owners are more likely to to uh, to stick with it because it's actually they're raising the profit. <laughs> All right. All right. That's fair. That's fair. So you mentioned the word program. So is this something that you take people through X number of weeks or or mm-hmm. classes or how yeah. does this work? How is it structured? Yeah. Yeah. So it's an eight week program that we have both one on one calls and group calls. And the group calls don't go into your personal finances. And actually, none of this really goes into your personal finances at all. Um, it really doesn't talk about like if you're able to pay this bill and how you pay this bill and, you know, budgeting and all that stuff, it's not really for designed for that. You know, um, okay. it's really designed to help people get out of the emotional weight around finances and numbers. Mm-hmm. And so the group calls that we have with people are more strategies about how to, how to, how to get your head out of this emotional overwhelm and to help you get back to a comfortable one-on-one relationship with money. And the group calls are designed to help you um, understand um, what important things that you need to do and the mindset you need to have to be able to to really put you in a better financial position. Okay. Um, and then there's three one-on-one calls with me. And then that's okay. when we actually get into more specifics around um, what you can specifically do to 
or specific challenges that you're having to mm-hmm. get through a, a financial piece at the time. So, for example, like let's say you're enrolled in the program, you speak with me and you say, hey, I've lost my job at, you know, I'm a, I run a restaurant, I'm a waiter in a restaurant, and I lost my job. Now what do I do? So mm-hmm. we'll brainstorm together to figure out different income strategies that you can help use to really to help you get more income, right? Gotcha. Because okay. it may not just be a, it may not just be a matter of finding that job. It may be a matter of like cutting down expenses. It may be a matter of really saying, you know what, I can't afford my rent right now. I'm going to move in with my parents and dealing with that that emotional stuff that's going through that and understanding that it's a one step back or two steps forward. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's fair. So you mm-hmm. must come across people that their problem is that they just don't take any action or they just, they're path of least resistance people. How do you deal with mm-hmm. them? Um, it's actually working with, through them, working with them to figure out what their, what their hang up is. Okay. You know, um, it, it really has to deal with um, people's commitment on really improving their lives and improving them, themselves. Sure. And so that's one of the things that, you know, we, we talk about. Because we talk about do you really want to know your numbers? Do you okay. really want to move your life forward? Sure. Several of our, several of our clients are, they have, you know, we do their accounting, we do their taxes, but they're not committed to their numbers, right? And you've got to be committed to your numbers to be able to, to, uh, to really move your business forward. You've got to be committed to your, your numbers in your personal life so that okay. you're able to really look at your, your goals and mm-hmm. um, create a better life for yourself. Okay. Do you – what do I want to ask here? You – presumably this, this thing has been going on through you guys for a little while, right? Is it, or is this fairly new? It's fairly new, and it's only because we've realized that a lot of our clients have this, have this problem. Okay. And a lot of the people that we've talked to, small business owners, have this problem. Gotcha. Okay. And so this may be on top of or in addition to some other type of coaching, I imagine? A lot of this is, this program is really for the beginning person who can't get their finances in order. Or can't gotcha. emotionally wrap their head around finances. Okay. You know, one of the strategies that we talk about in the program is a real simple way to um, to create to show profit in your business or to show profit in your personal life, um, and how to do that month to month with ease. Okay. And um, so one of the ways we talk about that, and I'll give you the little tip. Um, is to open a few checking accounts. Okay. Right? Whether you're per- business or personal, right? If you have two checking accounts, one with all your income and one with all your expenses, mm-hmm. you'll know at the end of the month if you're able to save or not, if you're if you're saving. Okay. Right? And so what that does is that really shows you where your income is coming from and it, where's, where's it going out. Uh-huh. And that's right. the biggest advice that we can offer offer, you know, to people that are, are really struggling with money. Because sure. then you start to see real really clear, you know, what you have left over and what you don't. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. <clears throat> so I guess this has been going on it sounds like fairly briefly. Have you had any success stories? Yeah, we've had we've definitely had some clients that have Recognize that their that the relationship with money is not the best. Okay. And so they have gone through the program, and they've really created a they moved to the next, our next level basically where they've actually gotten you know um, accounting or bookkeeping from us to really help them position themselves to move up to to to, to greater than six figures. Okay. So now. Do you like? Do you have any specific examples of a of a success story? I mean, you don't have to use names or anything like that, but just someone that came in, they were a train wreck, 
they left and now they own a yacht or <laughs> 50 houses. Or yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. They actually, you know, this, this particular individual actually, when she, when she first came in, she was, she was, she was in a lot of debt, you know, honestly. Um, sure. And she just didn't know where to start, you know. And so we worked with her first on her emotions around debt and explained that debt is not necessarily a bad thing. And so in her case, it was. Okay. Um, so once we got over, once we got over that and yeah. explained that to her, then she was able to understand how to create a a budget to get her out of that out of that um, out of that cycle. Gotcha. And so okay. now she's almost you know she's not quite you know she had a lot of debt so she's not quite debt free, so sure. she's definitely moving in a path of of, um, of better money management. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. That's very good. Mm-hmm. Do you are the majority of your clients for this program? Are they already existing clients of yours, or are they new? Mo- mostly new, because most of our clients are are most of our current accounting and tax clients are over six figures, six seven figures. Okay. And this program is really designed for the new entrepreneur, the new business owner that maybe has started their business. That's you know just struggling from month to month. Um, you know, one of the things that we'll talk about later on in the program is about cash flow and about how to, how to help your business with cash flow. Sure. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk okay. about how to look at your financials in a calm and confident way. Sure. Because um, lots of times, what happens is you'll get your financials from your accountant, and you'll feel immediately overwhelmed. You're like, oh my god, there's too many numbers on here. There's too many lines. Sure. Right. So we talk to you about your client. We talk to you coming from the accounting side. Mm-hmm. And we ask, you know, we ask our clients in this program, what's important to you? What's what in what pieces do you really care about in your business? And sure. then we help them whether whether with our it's with our firm or whether another firm. The five or six pieces of information yeah. that they can that they can ask their accountant for that they can just put on a spreadsheet for them. And those five or six things are the things that they want to see every month with their accountant. And then okay. the other things, you know, it, you know, our opinion is that it should be the responsibility of the accountant to really say, hey, your electric bill was tw- two times this month. What happened? All right. Or your, you know, your profit margins are reducing, you know, a lot. What's going on? Sure. You know, there is, you shouldn't be the no, you should know enough about your business to be able to answer those questions. But you right. don't need to know, as a CEO, you don't need to know every single line item on that spreadsheet. It's not your sure. job. Right. And so, so those are some of the things that we teach. Gotcha. All right. Well, that sounds like pretty common and certainly helpful. Mm-hmm. The um, I guess, have you ever been in a position where you would have needed something like this? Like, was there a personal connection to this? Or this is more you saw yeah, clients that needed something like this. This is actually a little bit of both. Um, you know, I one of the stories that I can definitely share is, um, you know, when I was um, when I was struggling. You know, I didn't have a job. Sure. I um, I got a windfall, a, a monetary windfall of two hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <Yay! laughs> you know, right? Two hundred dollars is not, you know, in the bigger scheme of things, is really not that much money, right? Sure. Hardly anything. But what I realized was that what happened was I took that two hundred dollars and I bought clothes with it. So it wasn't even like an extravagant expense, right? It was just clothes. Right. And after that, spending that two hundred dollars, I laid out all the clothes on my bed, and I started crying. And I was like, "Why am I crying?" Right. And I had to realize it was because I spent, I felt that $200, spending $200 in clothes was extravagant. Mm. All right. Right. And so I really had to get over that to be able to understand that, you know, if you want to be bigger and if you want to be bigger in your business and if you want to do bigger things, then 
when you start investing in your business and you invest in coaching and you invest in mentorship and you invest in, you know, different businesses, that you have to be more logical than emotional. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to be, you're going to be making decisions for your business that are not the right decisions. Sure. And so, you know, people say that emotions, uh, business and emotions are not good, and it's the same thing with finances. All right. That's fair. That's fair. So it sounds like you got out of that hole where two hundred dollars for clothes was was causing you some emotional challenges. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's the nice thing is like now I you know two hundred dollars you know for some people is still a lot of money, but in the bigger scheme it's not. And so we, you know, when you start learning more about money and you start learning more about finances, you can start controlling you know, your emotions around certain things. So when you're spending, you know, another story I have is, you know, we, I booked a hotel room for the wrong night. Oh no. And it was like the night before or something like that. Right. And 60 bucks. Sure. Right. For a hotel room, whatever it was at the time. Right. And same thing. I freaked out. I got stressed out. I got paranoid. I got like, Oh my God, where, what about the $60? Sure. And, when you're stressing out about sixty dollars or two hundred dollars or you know any five dollars that you may lose on you know you may drop out of your wallet or it's that whole thing of like you know when you know where's that twenty dollars that I left it in your jeans or something like that sure. when you're that worried about that those types of things right then you're never going to be able to grow you're so worried about twenty dollars when you should be worried about like Bigger things in your business or worried about bigger things in your life. All right. How do you change people's mindset then? Because I imagine a lot of these people have been conditioned over the course of time that money's evil, money doesn't grow on trees, you know, insert the negative money connotations that people have. How do you Mm -hmm. fix that? A lot of that is just their personal work and personal, you know, personal showing the mirror. Um, to them and sh- showing that that's not a that's not a, a realistic version of money. Okay. Money is just a, a means of current. It's just a means of energy, and sure. so you know, currency is energy. And so if you're always trying to, if you think that energy is that bad energy is around you, then you're always going to be bad with money. Versus sure. if you're more understanding that money is energy. It's just going to flow in and out of you, just like in everything else. Then um, you create a better relationship with money, and that's sure. you know for a lot of people that it, it it creates better opportunity for them. I like that whole the energy analogy. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's clever. That's really because it's really important when you think about it like that, you know. And you really, it's important when you. Take, you know, if you're, you know, another person, another example I have is I was coaching someone on on about sales. And mm-hmm. it's that if you're being scared to being sold to, you're never going to be able to sell yourself. Sure. Right? And it's the same thing with the whole energy concept. You put that, you know, that bad juju or energy, whatever you want to call it, around you and so you're never going to be able to close sales if you don't if you're not open to be sold to right that's fair that's totally fair interesting so when do you think you personally made that mindset shift um it's really it's really been since i started with the firm you know um when i became an entrepreneur and went from employee to business owner okay um that really helped. So Vidal and I started the firm about six years, six years ago, five, six years ago. Okay. Well, he start he was, he started the firm, he started the firm, and then he asked me to join. I sure. was working the nine to five, and then I ended up becoming an entrepreneur. And so once I became the entrepreneur, then that's when I started realizing that this, you know, you have to start investing in yourself and start investing in your business and start investing in, you know, the opportunities that come along. Sure. Um, otherwise, you're never going to grow. Oh, and so that right. for me was really the biggest, 
the biggest time where um, the mind, my mindset shifted. Sure. Um, interesting. That is interesting. It's so peculiar, the, um, what do I want to say? I guess the mindset, for lack of a better word, that people have on money that is generally negative and it takes some, like a you actually have to take a shift and really think about it in order to consider it to be a positive thing or maybe even neutral, right? Where it's just a, I use the analogy where it's a tool, just like a hammer and you use it to accomplish certain things, but it's not the end all be all, but you just have to learn how to use that tool. Just whereas a hammer could hurt you, a hammer could help you get stuff done too. So it's, and that's, and that's exactly, that's it. I was to say that's exactly the point with this program is getting people to a neutral spot so that they can actually look at their money more objectively. Sure. You know, one of the books I've read is um, by Mel Robbins. And I think it's called the five second rule. Oh, sure. And, um, and she talks about how if you count five, five, four, three, two, one, and then just do what you need to do, mm -hmm. um, it takes it from the, from the emotional side of the, of the brain to the logical side of the brain. Sure. And so a lot of times that's what you need to do with money is take it, mm -hmm. take it out of the emotional side of the brain and move it into the logical side of the brain. Then you're able to make better business decisions. Sure. And do you ever cross decisions around your finances? Sure. Do you ever come across people? I guess I see this in coaching as well, where some people are just happy with the problems that they have. And as long as they are attending class, so to speak, to account to repair that or fix that without actually fixing it, that they're okay with that. You ever run into that, where people kind of go through the yeah, motions you know, of listening to you but not really taking any definitive action? Oh yeah, that happens all the time. You know, there's a lady I got off a call with earlier this week or not early last night, and she says I gave her some different options because her. You know, it's a tough time for businesses, and especially mm -hmm. in her line of work, it was even tougher. And mm -hmm. I said, what if, what if you do this in, you know, this new area? And she's like, well, I can't do that because I have no control over it. Oh. I said, what do you mean? And she says, <laughs> she says, um, because things are constantly changing. And I said, well, you know, it's either you have one or two options at this point. Sure. Ultimately, right? Either you can close your business. Right. Or go back to what you were doing before. Right. Within this specific area. Sure. And she says, Oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Right? Well it's the whole thing is is that if you're a business owner, you have to make decisions. And if you can't make decisions, fast, quick decisions, yeah, you're gonna you're trouble. never gonna be able to yeah, you're never gonna be moved forward as a business. And especially sure. during this time, if you're not pivoting, you're never gonna be able to to continue growing your business. You're going to be stuck in the same thing and you're always going to be wondering about where am I going to get my next client from? Right, right. Yeah, it's interesting because something like this, I feel, is thrown onto a lot of people that may or may not have a growth mindset. Um, I like to think that every business owner at one point or another either has one or is forced to create one or they just get a job, right? Um, right. So it's interesting because... It, this is one of those things that I certainly didn't see coming. And I like to think, I don't know if I like to think that, but I can presume that not a lot of people saw coming. And so when you talk about mm -hmm. having, let's just say, for example, having two to six months of operating expenses thrown in a little piggy bank somewhere. And I've had people ask me like, well, why would I need that? And something like this comes along and you can see how fast money like that can get drained. If you're a restaurant and you go from typical revenue to next to no revenue, that can be a challenging time. Well, just not 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 just you know in the revenue side, but also in the tax side, because so many of the loan programs now, the um, PPP and the um, EDO, which is the um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other loan program that's out there, the SBA yeah. loan program out there, yeah. it's all based off your tax returns. And so if sure. you're showing like massive losses in your business, right, you're not going to qualify for the loans. Sure. 
right? You maxed out your tax deductions, but now you don't get any money for loans because you don't show income. Sure. All right. So people are making all these decisions based on like, I, I just, they're making emotional decisions, financial decisions based on what's going to be best for their for them at the moment. Mm-hmm. Instead of looking at their emotional financial decisions in the long term. Mm-hmm. Right. And so we always, we always work with our clients to figure out what is your long term goal? Like if you want to buy a house over the next five years, then you're going to have to pay taxes. Right. right, so that you show income, that you show yes. income. Yes. Versus, if you don't want to buy, a, if you just want to rent for the next few years, and you want to rent an apartment, and you're good with renting an apartment, then yeah, we can show losses. Right. Right. But it all depends on the strategy, and both are perfectly legal. Right. Right. It's just a matter of figuring out what you want to do with your business. Sure. And figuring out what you want, how you want to grow. And so many people are so worried about they don't have any idea of what they're going to what they're going to do in the future. Right. They just like okay, just just maximize my tax deductions and that's it. So I don't have to pay any taxes. Right. Well, now something like this something like this comes along and they can't get a loan or they can't, you know, they have to get a hard money loan, which those interest rates are really high. Right. So they their business ends up closing because they're making they're making irrational decisions can you just for the listeners here can you tell us what hard money is hard money is basically a loan that's higher in interest than your trip it's usually people that have money to lend out okay Um, so for example like you know um, if you do a home mortgage and you have all your documentation like your your um, personal income and you have a good credit score and, um, you know, you show income through your tax returns, then sure. you can get a lower interest rate that you would go through a bank. A hard money loan is basically where you can actually do, it's a higher rate of interest, but it's more risk. So okay. instead of paying like, I don't know what mortgage rates are now, 4 or 5%, something like that, you're sure. going to be paying like 7 8 or 9%. Oh, but gotcha. But you're doing like, um, you know, like back in the uh, 2008, when we had the 2008 financial crisis, they were doing stated income loans. So you'd just be like, oh, my income's this, huh. right? And that would be a hard, usually that's a hard money loan, not like a traditional lender loan. Sure. And okay. so a lot of times people are paying a lot higher interest rates, but they're able to get into loans. Mm-hmm. It's just because it's more risk in the loan. Gotcha. All right. That's fair. Can you let's talk about debt a little bit because that seems to be mm-hmm. um, a magic word, uh, sometimes helpful, mm-hmm. sometimes not. Can you just mm-hmm. tell us, um, just generally speaking, what you see that people have with debt, how they treat it, what they use it for, things like that. Sure. So de- debt in general, you know, it just depends on your view of debt. We have some clients that they use debt because they know that they're going to get paid in the future for a big expense. So, for example, one of our clients does events. Mm -hmm. And so he'll go into debt using that as leverage to pay for all the event expenses, and then at the event, he'll sell his program, and then he'll pay off all the debt. Gotcha. Right? So in 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 that case, that's a good use of debt because you're using it as leverage. Sure. If you use if you use debt as a um, to create yourself more of a uh, to go out and buy shoes, right? <laughs> That's not good debt because you're and then paying that back, right? So it it but you never want to look at debt as if you look at it as a bad thing, it's going to be a bad thing for you. Sure. So your perception of that debt has to change. And so if you understand that, hey, the reason why I'm putting these shoes on this credit card is to get points sure. you know, on your credit card and knowing that you're going to pay them off in like maybe a week or two weeks or, you know, by right. the end of the month, then sure. that's fine, you know, is my uh, perspective on it. But mm-hmm. if you're going to pay off these shoes in four years, <laughs> then your $100 pair of shoes actually end up costing you $200 because of the interest. Right, 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 right. So that's that's that that's bad debt. 
So, you know, you want to try to figure out what's going to be best for you and make sure that when you use that, use it in a log- methodical and logical way. Mm-hmm. How do you see most people using that? Uh, not in a good way. <laughs> you know, we'll have, we'll have, we'll have clients that, you know, that make purchases at Neiman Marcus. We'll have clients that, you know, will buy Macy's, but it won't be through their personal, it'll be through their business accounts, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and so a lot of that, that they, they create more debt for themselves. Um, and that debt, you know, just creates more stress. And anger sure. and frustration and like it just starts digging the hole that you can't get out of. Sure. All right. That's fair. That's totally fair. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned something that you wanted to circle back to and I forget what it is. Um, if you remember, we can, but if not, we can just keep moving on. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. you, you have a business partner, um, with your business here, it sounds like, um, Vidal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you guys work with clients together or do you each individually take some, or is this, is this your thing that you take on or tell me how you guys work? Yeah. He most, yeah, mostly this is going to be programmed that you're going to be working directly with me. Um, we actually have, um, there are some clients that we work with together, but most of them he deals because he, he deals with, um, because they're usually six, six and seven figure business owners, okay. and these business owners need a higher level of service. Sure. And so he really det- helps them determine tax strategy and tax planning, and um, helping them make you know decisions on buying other businesses. He helps them create um, uh, cash cash flow analysis to help them make, manage their cash flow over the course of the year. He helps them to budget um, to really make sure they're they're making their profit margins. So really higher higher um, accounting and tax functions that mm-hmm. he really helps with. Yes. This the program that I'm that I'm working through are people that are you know like I said beginning business owners maybe you know um, under six figures that really don't have a good grasp of their finances. When you start to get to people that are over six figures, then those are the people that really need more of a uh, tax strategy and a tax um, tax planning to really maximize their their business expenses. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So with Vidal, how did you and him meet and become business partners? So we we actually um, he was he's been doing accounting for the last twenty years. He um, uh, and I we actually ended up meeting at a bar and okay. we just started talking. And I was working for a nonprofit at the time, and he asked if um, we just ended up becoming friends. And then he ended up um, asking me if I wanted to join the team because sure. I ended up getting laid off from the nonprofit job. Okay. And I was doing fundraising in that nonprofit job. So he oh, said, gotcha. well, maybe you can do sales, do sales for us. And I was like, okay. So, um, um, so yeah, so that was my kind of my taste of entrepreneurship. Okay. And being a business owner. Sure. And, um, ever since then, it's been, it's been a great, um, opportunity. You know, I'm very thankful for that our business has grown to, to seven figures. And, you know, we both uh, made some, you know, really powerful, uh, or I'm sorry, we've really made some, we've learned a lot, you know, over okay. our, with the business and we've learned sure. about a lot about each other and about, you know, um, you know, I've learned a lot. Of, you know, he's always been an entrepreneur, but I haven't been. So I've learned a lot about being an entrepreneur and mm-hmm. some of the good things and bad things go oh, going along with being an entrepreneur. <laughs> and so on. Sure. Um, that's always been a it's been a it's 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 you know it's great you know um i am very grateful for the opportunity sure that's very cool that's very cool you guys have worked together for how long now it's been about six years six or seven years it's been a little while i'm just i'm in the process of hiring someone 
for an additional person mm -hmm. for calls on call. And it's interesting because I look at mm -hmm. the incoming resumes and it seems like if you've held a job for more than a year at the same spot, you're an anomaly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least at the, and the resumes that I've gotten. So it's kind of funny. Six years is cool. Yeah. And, it, you know, we actually, you know, one of the things I actually would highly recommend you do is make sure that you pick someone that, um, Ha that are stronger with you in certain areas, that are stronger than you in certain areas. Sure. Um, one of the things is that I am, I like to go to networking events. I like to be around people. I like to talk to people. I like to hang out with people, you know, sure. talking about our businesses, just, just a social, social guy. He's not, right. he's not quite like that. You know, <laughs> he would much rather just be in the, at the computer, you know, driving away the taxes, the accounting, you know, talking with the clients, like that's just kind of like his his deal. And so you really want to find out that find out someone that's going to be a good match for you. You know, if you're someone that, you know, is like me that wants to go out and just talk to people and find new clients and, you know, do podcasts and sure. radio interviews, and then you would want someone that's going to stay and do all the admin and do all the working with the clients and, so you really want to make sure that the that the person that you bring on is a good match. match sure. You. And that's I think one thing you know that's one thing that works works well with us. Gotcha. All right. Well, that's super cool. So we don't have a ton of time left, so I just want to ask for some quick advice if you don't mind. Sure. So for the people listening, what is the one thing that you would recommend to them for improving their financial situation personally? I would say you probably want to look at all of your available resources. Okay. So um, some people, you know, one of the things I see a lot in mine is like people will post, oh, I need a job, but I don't want any multi-level marketing. Okay. Or I'm looking for a job and I don't want to drive an Uber. Okay. Or I'm looking for a job and I don't want to do this. Sure. So instead of being so closed off on the opportunities that come to you, be more receptive to any opportunity that comes comes your way. Okay. So that would be that would be one of one of my biggest one of my biggest takeaways. Okay. And the second one? The other one the other one that I would say is um you always um you always want to imagine the worst case scenario and deal with it. Okay. Right? So what I mean by that is is that um, we get more um, worried about the actual what's going to happen, mm -hmm. and we create more anxiety instead of just dealing with, like, the worst-case scenario and thinking it out and realizing, oh, that's not – either that's never going to happen or I have situations around me that to take care of that. So, for example, like, you lost your job. You don't know if you're going to afford rent this month, and um, you don't know what to do, right? Mm -hmm. So let's think of the worst case scenario. You can't afford rent. You get kicked out of your place, right? Mm -hmm. Then what? Okay, so I can go live with my parents. I can go live with a friend. I can couch surf. Like, there's tons of different opportunities, sure. and it doesn't sound like the most luxurious or the most glamorous, but it's just a mess. It's because people are like, I'm going to be homeless and I'm going to sleep on the street and I'm not going to have anywhere to go. Oh, sure. Right? Is where they immediately go. Okay. Instead of thinking about there. all the other re – yeah, let's let's think about all the other resources that I have around me before I immediately go to that. Right? So – and the other – you know, the other tip is, you know, um, nurture your relationships. Okay. And what I mean by that is, you know – you know, try to, you know, um, try to create strong relationships with your partner, family, or friends around you so that um, you can help get you out of that, you know, the, the money misery sure. <laughs> that sometimes you sure. deal with, you know. <laughs> so help them change your mindset and help right. them, you know, create a, create a bit of connection to um, to help you deal with that. Sure. That's fair. That's very fair. Do you? It sounds like you're a reader. So, do you have any favorite um, financial books? 
You know, it's actually funny. Believe it or not, you know what I'm just now getting around to reading is Rich Dad Poor Dad. Oh, really? Okay, sure. That's a decent yeah, book. Believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm just in the process of getting of getting um, started on that one. Um, but I've actually, I probably the, um, yeah, I'm just kind of checking out my audio, Audible. I'm a big audio audio book person. So sure. Um, another another interesting book um, was The Virgin Way by Richard Branson. Was actually another really good book. I have not read about, that yet. Okay. Yeah, he and he basically talks about his him building Virgin and about his oh, really? you know his history, the facts and stuff, and about you know the Virgin, uh, you know because Virgin is a huge conglomerate. They have many different companies and and Virgin, and he talks yeah. about you know all the different companies he creates and kind of the the culture around Virgin. All and right. um, that was actually that was a really good book too. Huh, that sounds interesting. And I I'm like actually, it. I'm actually a real big. And I'll give you one more just for a bonus. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm a real big Disney fan, right? You said Disney. And I just read Disney. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so I just read the book um, "The Ride of a Lifetime" by um, Robert Iger, who's current who's was the CEO and now he's CEO again of Disney. Okay. And he talks about his basically his he his whole life of being at ABC, working his way up through ABC, and he got acquiring Capitol Records or Capitol, sure. I can't speak Capitol Records, and then Disney buying them, and then his transition to CEO and Michael Eisner. It's, it's actually a really good book if you're really interested in them in the business side of Disney and kind of how he created the, you know, the monstrosity that Disney is now today. Yeah. I'm incredibly interested in that because it's, it's interesting. My six year old kid, anytime he sits down to watch TV, it's interesting when you're just flipping through the different channels. I mean, channels, quote unquote, on Netflix, Hulu, whatever. All of the yeah. things that you're going through, the companies that own the rights to that given show, and Disney owns a lot. <laughs> Holy cow, do oh, they yeah. own a lot. Yeah, so that's yeah. real. That's interesting. And you don't even realize, it's actually one of the most interesting stories is, um, I didn't know this, but Bob Iger and um, Steve Jobs were really good friends. Oh, really? And, yeah, and so because, I don't know if you knew this, but Pixar used to be owned by Steve Jobs. I did and, know that. I'm just having a hard time imagining and, Steve Jobs with a friend. <laughs> yeah, I know. And so he ended up, him and Bob became really good friends until Steve's death. Okay. And um, it was, you know, when the Disney-Pixar merger happened, Yeah. in the book, Bob talks about um, the day that... Um, they had the, the press release to announce the merger, the official, you know, the official merger. Mm -hmm. um, and Steve Jobs and him go for a walk right before the, um, right before the, um, the PR. Okay. Or, right, right before the PR event. And he ended up telling Bob Iger that he has cancer. Oh, and, and so ever since then, or ever since that point, Bob was about to, you know, he said, I just want to have cancer. So if you want to stop this right now, you can. Oh. Like, stop the, like they're about to go on to not the merger. And Bob's like, no, we're going to do it. And sure. so it was like kind of a really pivotal moment in the book that really Bob kind of goes into in detail. So, like I said, there's there's a lot of stories like that. You know, there's another sure. story about him and um, George Lucas when he buys Lucas Oh, sure, sure. That. And so there's huh. many, there's many different parts. So if you're interested, like I said, in Disney or Bob Iger, I definitely would recommend it. That is super cool. I like that. Well, thank you for yeah. sharing those. Mm -hmm. No problem. Awesome. Well, Jeff, this has been a blast. We're out of time, so we're going to wrap this up. Um, where can people find you? Sure. You can actually visit our website at invictus-advisors.com forward slash emotions. And that talks about our financial emotional mastery course. 
or if you're interested in just finding out more about our firm, you can visit Invictus-Advisors.com. Gotcha. Super cool. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Studio, as well actually remote, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. If you are listening to this on the web, please like, subscribe, and share. My name is James Kademan, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering and receptionist services for small businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com, as well as Draw In Customers Business Coaching, offering business coaching services for entre entrepreneurs, excuse me, tough word, right, in all stages of their business on the web at drawincustomers.com. And of course, The Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur in all of us, available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Jeff Redondo, Managing Partner at Invictus Advisors. Jeff, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. And then one more time, Jeff, what's that website again? Invictus-advisors.com. Awesome. Find us airing on 103.5 Wednesdays at 1 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m., as well as at sunprairiemediacenter.com. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night at the podcast link found at drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business. <laughs>